Get ready for a blast from the past with the 1965 TV series where chaos meets comedy in a secret spy agency. Have you ever wondered when you first tuned in to the hilarious world of Get Smart? Or maybe you had a favorite classic Hollywood actor in the mix. Well, buckle up because we've got some funny, shocking, and even a few sad facts coming your way. Keep watching. Now, let's talk classic Hollywood charm. Who was your favorite actor in the series? The show is a treasure trove of talent and everyone has their pick. But wait, there's more. We're eager to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the show. Drop those stories and reflections in the comments below. We'd love to relive those moments with you. So whether you're a longtime fan or just discovering the comedic genius of this classic series, join the conversation. The world of Get Smart has more surprises in store. And who knows, your story might just be the one that brings a smile to someone's face. Stay tuned for more insights and anecdotes and share your own. Get Smart starts off with a really funny opening that's still relatable today. The security measures leading to a phone booth are amusing, and the portrayal of Control's top agent adds a timeless layer of comedy. Comparing it to our current government adds a funny touch, showing the familiar theme of close calls in national security. The cone of silence becomes a metaphor for the leaders being out of touch with reality. Don Adams, a great TV actor, brings humor to the show similar to comedians like Buddy Hackett. It's sad that he passed away recently, and that's a loss for the entertainment industry. The Claw is a great part of the show, but new viewers should enjoy it in moderation. The recurring themes and clever jokes make the show charming. One of the best sound gags is not the craw, the craw. Talking about the DVD release, it's important to wait for the official release and not get unauthorized copies. A note from October 29, 2005 warns about legal consequences. The personal reflection on working with Don Adams for several years shows the fond memories shared. There's a hope for a potential book publication which adds an interesting note to the review. In conclusion, Get Smart is a classic that mixes humor, satire, and memorable moments. The show has left its mark on popular culture and Don Adams' contribution is celebrated. This review captures the essence of the series, offering insights beyond its first airing. Get Smart, a popular TV show from the mid-60s, had a big impact on spy comedies and inspired another well-known character. Inspector Gadget, voiced by Don Adams, shared the clumsy and not-so-great spy traits just like Maxwell Smart. Lines such as Would You Believe and Sorry About That, Chief from Get Smart became part of Gadget's conversations, giving a nostalgic touch for Get Smart fans. In a surprising turn of events in the last season, Larrabee, played by Robert Carvelis, becomes more important, and Max humorously addresses a question about a possible family connection between him and Larrabee. Interestingly, Larrabee's actor, Robert Carvelis, was Don Adams' cousin, creating a real-life family link. The cool red convertible that Don Adams drove in the opening credits of the first seasons was a 1965 Sunbeam Tiger Mark I. This classic car with a Ford 260 V8 engine showed up in various episodes in the first four seasons. Sometimes a similar-looking Sunbeam Alpine with Tiger badges substituted for it. In the opening credits of the third and fourth seasons, a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia was featured, even though it never appeared in any episode. For the fifth season, a 1969 Opel GT was the star in both the opening credits and the episodes. Also, a vintage 1960s Ferrari 250 GT Cabriolet briefly showed up in the pilot episode, showcasing the different classic cars in the show. These backstage details give us a peek into the connections between characters, both on and off screen, as well as the evolution of the cool cars that became famous in the series. These insights make the viewing experience even better for fans of this timeless comedy. Agent 99's name almost took a different turn, as rumors suggested it could have been Agent 69. However, Barbara Feldon clarified that her character was initially meant to be Agent 100, symbolizing completeness. The change to 99 was ultimately chosen for its feminine sound, courtesy of Buck Henry. Barbara Feldon's commitment to the series faced initial uncertainty. Initially signing on for just four episodes and resisting a standard five-year contract, she eventually extended her commitment to three years after the pilot. Subsequently, she agreed to an additional two-year contract after the third season. The show's network journey added an intriguing twist to its history. 
Following NBC's cancellation after four seasons, CBS picked up the series for its fifth and final season. This move provided a new home for the show's last chapter, closing the chapter on Maxwell Smart's comedic adventures. When the creators proposed the TV series to ABC, they wanted Tom Poston as Agent 86. ABC said no, so they went to NBC. NBC agreed to make a pilot only if Don Adams, who was already with NBC, played Agent 86. That's how Maxwell Smart was created. Agent 99, played by Barbara Feldon, kept things mysterious in the show. Her real name was never revealed, even after she married Max. They once mentioned Susan Hilton, but later said it was just an alias. So, her true identity was always a secret. Dell Comics turned the show into a comic book from 1966 to 1967. Steve Ditko, who helped create Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, drew some of the stories. This added something special to the show's world. The show wasn't just on TV. It influenced other spy comedies and characters like Inspector Gadget, who sounds like Don Adams. Lines from Get Smart, like Would You Believe, and Sorry About That Chief are also in Inspector Gadget's lines. This connects Get Smart fans to Inspector Gadget in a special way. The show had cool cars from a 1965 Sunbeam Tiger Mark I to a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia and a 1969 Opel GT. These cars became an important part of how the show looked. Fans also liked learning about how the cars changed behind the scenes. At first, people thought Agent 99 would be Agent 69. But Barbara Feldon said her character was supposed to be Agent 100, meaning complete. They changed it to 99 because it sounded more feminine and Buck Henry made that choice. Barbara Feldon wasn't sure about sticking with the show. She agreed to do four episodes at first and didn't want a standard five-year contract. But she stayed for three years after the pilot and then agreed to two more years after the third season. The show had a change in networks. After NBC canceled it after four seasons, CBS picked it up for the fifth and final season. Maxwell Smart's Funny Adventures found a new home on CBS. In the end, Get Smart's journey had interesting casting choices, mysterious characters, comics, and network changes. It's a chapter in TV history that shows how much people love spy comedies. Agent 99 made history as the first working mom on TV. While most TV moms stayed home, she stood out by staying a secret agent even after having twins in the last season. This unique twist challenged the usual way moms were shown on TV. The idea for the show came from Daniel Melnick, the talent associate's producer. He wanted a character that combined James Bond and the Pink Panther. This mix created the well-known Maxwell Smart, adding a special touch to spy comedies. Chief, initially known as Thaddeus, used the cover name Harold Clark in the last two seasons, making his character more interesting. This change added layers to the Chief's character, showing different sides of him. Barbara Feldon, who played Agent 99, almost had her character's name changed to Agent 100. This was to symbolize completeness, but they went with 99 for a more feminine feel. She stuck with the series for five years, playing a crucial role in its success. CBS picked up the show for its fifth and final season after NBC canceled it. This move was a big moment for the show, giving a new home for Maxwell Smart's funny adventures. Inspector Gadget, voiced by Don Adams, got inspiration from Maxwell Smart. They shared similar traits and catchphrases, creating a link for Get Smart fans. The details behind the scenes of the show's cars added another layer to the watching experience. From a 1965 Sunbeam Tiger Mark I to a 1969 Opel GT, the changes in these classic cars were interesting for fans. The different cars in the opening credits show with the show's commitment to looking good. In short, Get Smart went beyond normal sitcoms, breaking new ground with its portrayal of a working mom and mixing ideas from popular films. The show's success, along with interesting character changes and details behind the scenes, secured its place in TV history.